Hey there guys, so Shakti energy work and gemstones and crystals, okay? That's what this one's going to be about. I'm uh, trying to do this and sit in the sun at the same time because I've got my sliding door open. It's actually 15 degrees outside and the sun's coming into the house. And it's just too good to not soak in, you know, at this point. Um, I haven't had any sun in two months. So, yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, combine both uh, things at the moment. Today is uh, Tuesday 17th of December. And, um, you know, there's normally no sun to be seen at all. So having gone into this whole uh, Shakti energy work um, process um again for you guys and also for myself of course um i was suddenly reminded that there are actually types of crystals that you can use in different ways to sort of make connecting with shakti a bit easier i guess or to smooth the way between the shakti energy and yourself and yeah, I suppose that's how it works, really. I suppose a lot of these crystals that I've got spread out in front of me here are actually bridges of sorts. So um, I will go into them, I think, uh, in a bit. I'm holding on to this uh, Kundalini, which is actually a citrine. It looks a bit like a smoky quartz. Uh, let me see if I can bring it in for you to see, like that. Um, it has on this side where my finger is here, it actually has, can you see that, a row of little crystals uh, growing bigger one after the other and then sort of sitting next to this big crystal here. Let me hold it in the light see on that side now this was sold to me as a uh, specifically as a kundalini crystal and so I've been sitting with this for the past couple of minutes and trying to connect with it which I hadn't really you know gotten around to doing beforehand and um, I seem to recall something about um, like a castle terminology. Hang on, I'm going to try and find the uh, little info leaflet that I've got with this one. Hang on. And I found it. Yes. Kundalini citrine, a rare form of citrine from the Congo, um, is characterized by little points around the main point. And it's the most powerful citrine that we've encountered so far. It's a natural citrine that uh, can help bring up the kundalini energy along the spine from the base chakra to the crown chakra. It cleanses all chakras and opens higher chakras to the soul star and further on. Kept above, held above the head, it'll create a cosmic orgasm, there you go, um, that will take you to the heart of creation to become a fellow creator. All that sounds really good. There's more like this. Um, I'm going to put this aside for now because um, I, <laughs> all this is really good, you know. It brings me straight away to um, a theme I was talking to husband about. It's sometimes so tempting to just wing off into some type of paradisiac uh, world of the spirit, which is exactly what my mum used to do, which is exactly where I learned a form of kundalini meditation that I realized recently never taught me anything about the Shakti. So I'm kind of more a, a um, you know, getting back to basics kind of a person, I suppose. And as much as I love going off into the whole like, ecstasy and all the rest of it, I feel that it is my job on this planet to 
bring a connection between up there and down here. And also, my poor mum, she never got around to realising and manifesting any of those things for herself. She taught me a type of kundalini meditation or chakra meditation, as she used to call it back in the 80s, you know, that uh, did, it didn't really involve anything other than a concentration exercise, which was cool as far as I'm concerned. I'm not blaming her in any way for never catching on to the whole Shakti business. But it's weird because I realized this two days ago that I spent <laughs> quite a number of emotional moments and difficult moments with my mum and her trying to sort of force feed me this technique of hers and there was no Shakti appeal is the word that comes to me in any of it anywhere ever the word it wasn't mentioned but also the concept the 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 fire was missing my mom had many problems and i was one of them <laughs> you know i was only one of them but she had so many problems and she could have had she only managed to connect to this to the to the real you know there you go the real the root connect to the root okay that's why i'm here that's why i'm here that's why you're potentially here that's what i'm all about so this is a great stone it's a great i love citrines i've always felt like they're kind of all you know, going into this wonderful self-realization and into off into this wonderful unhampered, unlimited, limitless freedom, joy, great joy. This, it's wonderful to be in this space with this type of crystal. So if that's what you're looking for, citrine is your stone. And maybe we all could use a bit more joy in our lives. Certainly. I'm reminded uh, that in Indian philosophy, in um, I'm not sure of the sources other than you know the Upanishads or places like that. Um, God, the original, you know, creator of the universe and us in it. His his her whichever way you want to see it. His nature is Ananda, Anand meaning joy, which is a very familiar name. In India also. Joy is important. The joy that is. Um, great fan. Love it. But there's uh, a bit more work for us to be done. And I'm here at this moment to also sort of try and see how these rocks that I've got here in front of me um, organize with respect to the Shakti. How does each of these rocks that I've got in front of me here contribute uh, in a different way? Each one has something else to say about my connection to the earth, if you like. So very much an Ace of Pentacles type of activity here. So I'm trying to decide which one to pick first. Maybe I should show you these first. Of course, there is amber here. And there's my all-time favorite as to earth energies and uh, root chakra energies, desirite. Uh, amber is well known. I've got another one right here. Uh, let me see whether I can show that to you. It will actually focus. It has it's great transparency. I've got quite a number of these. I've also got a number of these on my necklace that you sometimes see me wear that has, um, you know, like my integration necklace, I call that. It has a bone in the middle with a symbol carved and a couple of little bits and bobs. And uh, I might as well show it to you. Where is it? Because it's right over here. This one. See? I make stuff like that sometimes. Um... So amber and desirite are actually rather 
closer to each other, I think, in that they're both soothing stones. They're calming to the nervous system. They bring a certain warmth and that's reassuring in a way. So actually wearing this together like so, I can sort of tell the difference between them. This is a quartz, so its vibration is slightly... It has a bit more of a penetrating quality. It goes deeper. Quartz is a great healer by itself. Any quartz. Citrine, just now, is a quartz, okay? So, wouldn't be where we are now if it weren't for the quartzes. All of it. And the amber, even though I'm... Yeah, it's fossil resin, so I don't think that it's the same type of um, composition at all as as this. So the vibration is quite different. Um, maybe this is more emotional. Maybe that's why amber is so popular as a crystal for people to wear also in, you know, jewelry and all sorts of ways. People have worn amber as crystals and jewelry and pendants and earrings and all that uh, for as long as we can remember really. So amber is, I think, just a bit more on the emotion side of things. And this is a bit more on the healing side. And otherwise, I would say that Desirite and Amber are quite in the same path, more or less. It's the path of warmth and uh, soothing, comforting vibrations. So I've got two more Desirites here, like so. This won't really be any good because I can't block my face off. But there's, you know, a Desirite is a quartz that has like sandy looking um, parts in it. So it looks like a transparent, translucent at least uh, quartz crystal. This is a double one right there. This is my double ended one that I showed you earlier this week. Um, Fairly translucent, not as completely clear as rock crystal, and there's a tint to it, a sandy tint in a couple of tints, really. So going towards the iron red tints, slightly, just all sorts of sandy tints, really. That's how you can recognize Desirite. Uh, polishes really well. I've got a couple of polished ones as well. This one's polished. And it's basically a polished point that has probably been in a, you know, in a river somewhere. You can see where that's quite, uh, you know, rounded off. It was uh, found in this shape probably, and then just polished in the tumbling, uh, you know, set with all with a lot of other gemstones. And the the basic shape of the point is still there. So this is also, um, yeah. That's what I would say is the 101 of earthing, grounding, calming type stones that really sort of sit really well with Shakti energy. It doesn't really go, it doesn't make your Shakti energy go up. It doesn't really pull out the Kundalini. And I'm not completely sure whether the citrine that I showed you earlier will do that either. Because if we don't want the Shakti, it's not happening. That's how I tend to look at it. So the next one in this kind of the same kind of a category is Carnelian. Um, I'm a great fan of Carnelian and I hardly ever use them. Probably because I don't um, really need it. I've got a lot of this type of vibration by myself, what with three planets in Cancer. <laughs> I don't know how much good that's going to do to you, but there you go. Moving from the other two or the three, you know, to onto carnelian like this, I can sense that this one is more emotional than amber. It's really the second chakra uh, crystal by excellence, I would say. I've got a couple of these. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. I love them to pieces. And I wouldn't them, want them uh, to not be in the house. Because, yeah, they're often quite cheap. This is also a quartz, by the way. So, uh, Carnelian. A great, happy, 
stone for a happy belly. I want people with belly problems to have at least six of these around the house because it'll help. This and maybe a few rose quartzes or so and you're already working at it, okay? Um, what it does probably will be pulling some Shakti energy into the second chakra, into bits that are supposed to be active. And they're not active enough in the life that we lead. And then bringing this out into the open, getting this organized for us, makes us feel better. It makes the belly better. And there, the rest of the person, the rest of us, is suddenly going like, oh God, yeah, you know, this is actually, I feel a bit more alive. Carnelian will do that. I don't think Amber or Desirite or even the Kundalini Citrine will do this for us to, hey, it's good to be alive kind of a vibration. That would be much more of a Carnelian type vibration. My impressions. Um, I think a lot of these impressions that I'm sharing with you guys here uh, are sort of universal, but of course there's language. So if you don't really use the same words that I do for those things, you will say that differently. There's always a big problem with people. We don't talk about things in the same way. And I am kind of hoping that being a bit sort of trying to sort this out in a really basic way. So like the amber is more emotional than the quartz and the quartz is a bit more on the healing side, that that will eventually help, you know, get these, get these things sorted out. Because I think... What I'm on to basically is a fairly universal, um, you know, type of information. This will work. The Canelian is a happy maker for many people. But, of course, there's always a load of buts. It depends on what you need, really. And if your second chakra is operating according to spec and there's other things going on in your life, then this isn't your happy-making stone, necessarily. Although, there's always an although as well, right? So, yeah. So, I showed you earlier this week, uh, this these two. These are Boji stones. And let me, no, because the sun has moved. So now I have to show them on this side. There's a rougher one and a smoother one. Can you see that? Um, these come in pairs. Sometimes they're bigger than this. Depends on the price also. You can sit with them in your hands one each like so or I also tend to just sit like with with them in one hand and a Desirite like this and it just the the effect is very different. This is um, I think it's an iron oxide. I'm not completely sure. It's a special crystalline shape, of course, with these nice round buttons like that. These are natural shapes as they come out of the ground. Uh, I think there's also a bit of... Maybe it's a pyrite. wouldn't be able to tell, really, because they... It looks like they melted at some level and then sort of recrystallized again. That kind of a thing. I'd have to look it up. They've got a, an edge to, to them, like they're little lenses. Um, focusing what you get with this and with other uh, iron based uh, stones and so I'm, I'm hesitating for a second because a lot of the quartzes actually also contain iron and it's the iron that's participating in the vibration gives the effect for amethyst for example or smoky quartz so these would be more like pure iron just like this one which is a polished pyrite hoping you can make that out uh quite shiny and i'm trying to see whether i can feel a lot of difference between this and the two bojis b-o-j-i is how you spell that and these are more grounding in effect than this one. Pyrite is the money stone by excellence. So I've got another one over here I want to show you. This is a pyrite crystal. 
a naturally formed uh, cube or several parts of several cubes sort of grown together like so and I would of course uh, be tempted to compare these two. These uh, pyrites often called fool's gold and I believe it isn't only because of the way it looks it's also because of its vibration. It is an iron oxide of some type. Chemistry and natural mineralogy is really fascinating because there's all sorts of, you know, the way it's, it, it observes the nature of the rocks in a really uh, well-organized way. So, yeah, it's quite tempting to, for me always to try and feel the difference between the crystalline, natural crystal shape and the polished shape, whether there's really all that much of a, of a difference. And I always kind of get to the idea that the crystal shape is more true to its nature because it has all those edges and it's all very expressive of its nature as a, as a almost crystal life, if you like to see it that way. Uh, whereas the polished one or the rounded off one is more accessible to us because yeah so you would have that this one's further away from me the crystal shape even though it's perfect or because it's perfect really it's further away from me it's less easy for me to to relate to than this one very interesting so I probably should put these two both by the side of my Buddha over here in order for the money to come rolling into the house. Let's see what that does, okay? I'm going to stick them back over with the Buddha, both of them, like so. And put the sticker on the bottom. There you go, that's cute. So, um, this, these two, the bojis, don't have the money vibration, I think. So it's like the pyrite has like this manifestation energy in it and this is more like it's much more self-contained which makes sense from the the lens shape that they've got um which is also a crystalline shape and it's really self-contained and it sort of redirects the energy in if you if you like to the root chakra to the basis i would say that to work with in a Shakti type context, if you want to work with Shakti energy, these are your friends. These, the Desirite and the Amber, are the closest thing to the actual relaxation of the root chakra that I keep on shouting about. Because that's what you need for Shakti to come in and to come into your life, really. Okay, so the last one that I want to talk about that really has a nature that is in some way uh, close to the Shakti energy and the Kundalini business, I think, from what I've got on my table and what I've got in my collection so far that I think I can show you at this time, is this one. This is a malachite egg shape doesn't really matter that it's an egg. Um, I don't think this ever really makes crystalline shapes. It's a, a layered stone. It has like layers of, and it contains copper. The green color is a copper oxide, among other things. It's a different animal altogether. And when I bought this one, I was reminded of the fact that it's malachite is the Actually, the only uh, crystal or gemstone that is known that really combines earth and fire elements in itself. Handling it now, after the other ones, I get, you know, another opportunity to connect with this. And I can see that this is actually quite a powerful uh, Shakti worker stone. I would call it um, in that it especially opens up at the back of my head here and a lot of the other stones there's more you know other other than these basics that I've shared with you so far 
There's more crystals and types of gemstones uh, like this one. What they do is open channels. So sh channels for the Shakti to become a part of. So I'm actually discovering, as I sit here talking to you, the use for me, the application for me, of this uh, gorgeous green egg that I love so much. Because I, I connected with this instantly when I saw it in the shop um, a couple of years ago. I went and got it because I've always been a fan of the color and of the deep, deep green and all that. And it was it was very appealing to me. And now I can sort of discover again that this actually also working on my head where I've been, you know, going with my Shakti energy quite a bit uh, to get some <laughs> some room in all the clogged up um, channels in my brain, basically. Uh, for all sorts of reasons and this is a powerhouse uh, Shakti promoter I would say yeah so I think um, I'm going to leave this one out on the table for a bit and uh, you know see what happens I have to myself handle them for the effect to happen to me and often I will sit with this particular stone or whichever one I'm working with. Um, I will sit with it for an hour or so max and basically also do other things in the meantime. Then I will leave it out uh, close to me uh, for a little while. And um, then it's like the message has sunk in. I do not need to carry it around with me forever or stuff like that. So, I think that it is, that is it, sorry, <laughs> my uh, collection of Shakti based um, crystals. I've got several more out over here uh, that I've used. I've got uh, an Elestial Smoky Quartz over here. Let me see whether I can show that to you. It's uh, like a weird shaped uh, crocodile uh, smoky quartz got facets on all sides it's basically like an extended cube flattened with uh, all sorts of facets on all sides and down here there's a little piece where it actually used to sit on its uh, on its matrix like so um i think that's what it's like anyway uh elestials are a completely different kettle of fish great cleansers they're always quartered again so back to the quarters um I tend to think my celestial collection contains a, a sort of a helping on the one side that are basically smoky quartzes and a helping on the other side that are basically citrines and sometimes they're both and the citrine part is sort of uh, less brown in color it's more like almost a grayish type of a brown and that's how you can sort of tell Actually, that's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not so easy to say, really, because this is really a smoky quartz, it's not a citrine. So, anyway, um, I tend to think of the smoky quartz uh, elestials as cleansing, all elestials are cleansing crystals anyway, so detoxing. Important tip when you're using elestials or carrying them around with you to hydrate properly, drink enough water. I am saying this the rest of my life. It's essential. Um, depending on the type of elestial, because I've got like a couple more over here that I haven't shown you yet. A couple of really weird ones. Elestials tend to be really weird and the weirder, the more fun I think they are. Uh, this is another one that's got like a, layering I'm trying to see whether I can show this to you layering of all sorts of tiny little weird bits there's a facet that actually looked like looks like it's been written on afterwards that's how you also can recognize um, elestials so cleansing detox rocks the elestial lots of them got another really weird one this is also citrine and it looks like it's been more or less gnawed to bits and uh, it's a great healer, this one. It's really, really beautiful. It's completely, each of these 
is completely different in nature and I love them all and I work with them to the extent that I dare <laughs> because like I said I'm not gonna be exploding all over the space I want to be right here where I can do something useful thank you very much um so I've got what have I got else I'm going to put this one aside for now I've got a really wonderful ruby crystal uh, that's a completely different animal again I think this has much more to do um, also with um, you know believing in yourself in a way uncovering the self that you can be priceless gorgeous lots of, I've got several rubies that I love I'm a real crystal nut as you can tell there's two more that haven't really got anything to do with the Shakti necessarily, although I am finding, as I'm talking to you here and showing these, that actually now that I'm almost a year on in my Shakti energy work, as I have talked about it on, your, on the channel here, actually each of those crystals, each of the stones, every one of the stones that I've used ever has something to contribute in terms of liberating areas of myself two more okay and then i'm i'm gonna leave you to it this is a purple chalcedony actually i think that's where you can see the color best powerhouse this is a purple labradorite i'm gonna see whether i can actually show you the tints in there uh very unusual type there it goes. See that pinkness in there? There's pink and purple. Two powerhouses in terms of dealing with, especially with emotions of guilt, which is what I've, you know, been, I guess, addicted to in a way. It's like an addiction. It was a um, millstone around my neck. Both of these have given me a sense of emotional freedom and emotional uh, accountability beyond of self-realization in an emotional field that used to be completely overridden by guilt because of the things, because of the past. And so great liberating stones, both of them. But so far into the emotional perspectives, that's where these live. Okay, they don't live in the world of the Shakti, unlike the other ones. But I thought I should sh I should show them them to you anyway because these two have done a lot uh, for me to end up, you know, where I am today. So um, I think I will leave it at that for now. This is just a part of my collection that I've used. Uh, in this particular way basically the way I've described them is also how I've used them and um, I think it's time for me to get back to my hoovering I'm sorry <laughs> still more hoovering I live in a great big house so yeah there is sometimes hoovering to do thank you so much for coming along for the ride again and uh, you know I'll be back one time or another see you soon bye bye